welcome back everyone. We have another video with the DJI Air 3 and we're going to be talking about the camera setup and specifically about single photo mode. And we'll also be comparing RAW versus JPEG, 12 versus 48 megapixel and the 24 millimeter and the 70, 70 millimeter lens. That's what we're going to talk about specifically today in this video. All other features we'll be covering in future videos. So if you are new here, subscribe for future videos on the DJI Air 3. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so on the DJI RC2, at once the drone is connected to the controller, this is what the screen will look like. Now in the top right hand, you'll have the three dots. So if you click on that, that will access your menu. Now we want to go to the camera tab, which is in the middle here. First things you'll see is obviously what format you want to be shooting in, which is JPEG, RAW or JPEG and RAW. You have your aspect ratio, whether you want to shoot in 4x3 or 16.9. Your resolution, which is either 12 or 48 megapixels, and there are some differences within the features. The next one down is to do with anti-flickering. I've just left this on auto. You then have your histogram, which you can turn on and off. And this is good to see, to see what parts of your photo are overexposed. And then the Air 3 fan kicks in. Below this is your peaking level. So when you're in manual focus mode, you will see a red outline to see what's in focus. And I'll show you that later. You then have your overexposure warning. So if you have this toggled on, anything overexposed will show zebra lines. You then have your grid lines, which are useful for composing your shot. You then have your white balance, which you can set to auto or manual. Your storage options. So if you have an SD card, you can select that. If not, you have an eight gig internal storage. Now your custom folder naming, if you're flying at several locations, you can create new folders for those files to go into that folder and the same with the naming. So that can be pretty handy if you're flying from location to location. Cache when recording. So essentially this is just saving a low resolution copy to either your SD card or to the internal memory of the DJI RC2. Now let's take a look at your camera view settings. On the right hand side, you can see where it's got the shutter, and photo and video modes, your one times and three times zoom, so switching between the two different uh, cameras, and then your autofocus and manual focus mode. So if we just click on the square here, you can see that we're looking at single photo mode. Toggle the zoom by tapping the one or three times zoom. So obviously it won't be in focus now because we're too close to our subject. The one thing I wish DJI need to fix is you can switch between the two 24 and 70 millimeters by using right dial. However, they've disabled this function. This only works in video. So I hope in a new firmware update, they're able to switch between the 24 and 70 just by using this dial. And then autofocus, if you just tap that, it will switch between auto and manual focus. And this is where peaking comes in. So if I turn the peaking mode on, so as you can see here, as I use the manual focus, you can see the red outline. So that's going to be what's in focus because it's really close. And then you just tap away on screen or you've clicked autofocus and it will just go back to autofocus. If you keep on tapping autofocus, it will switch between the various modes, whether it's really close or it's going to be infinity out far. You probably want to keep this on autofocus unless you specifically want to nail your focus and stick to manual and use the peaking mode. Now, when you're in auto mode, using the DJI Air 3, uh, on the bottom right, you'd be able to adjust the values as well. So if I click on the format, you can switch formats again. If you click on the exposure value, you can adjust this exposure value. And if you click on the storage options, this is where you can select where you want your photos to be saved. Now, if we switch to manual mode or pro mode, now you can see the image is blown out because we're obviously overexposed at this time. However, if we click on the functions at the bottom again. So if we click the first one, you can see we have our two second timer. But if I click on auto shutter, auto ISO, we can bring everything back into focus and we can even adjust the exposure value as if we were in auto. Now with photos specifically, you won't need to worry about uh, the shutter speed too much unless you wanna be more creative and take maybe long exposures during the day or you're taking a long exposure at night. So then maybe this is where you need to adjust it you'd probably be fine with auto mode when taking still photos. If you click beside that, 
you will have more options to switch between 12 megapixels and 48 megapixels. You even choose your aspect ratio. And then again, whether you want to select JPEG RAW, JPEG and RAW, your auto white balance. So it's rather than having to click the three dots and go through the whole menu system there, within pro mode, you can select the options you want within camera view. Now bear in mind, there is a difference between 12 and 48 megapixels, which I'll be discussing later in the video, reviewing the images that I have captured so far. Another thing to note with 12 and 48 megapixels on the shutter speed, if I click on 12 megapixels for now, you can see under the shutter speed, we have a maximum of eight seconds for a long exposure with 12 megapixels. However, if we go to 48 megapixels, the longest shutter speed that we can get is two seconds. Now let's talk about the function buttons on the DJI RC2 and how they work with the DJI Air 3. So if you are in video mode, all you have to do to go to camera mode without having to use the screen is literally just tap the camera and it will switch into the camera mode. And vice versa, if you click on video mode when it's in camera mode, it will switch. Now there is a focus button, there is a two-step trigger on the camera button. If you press it once lightly, it will focus and you can see on screen it trying to focus and then you press again to take a photo. Now you do have two function buttons at the bottom of the DJI RC2, C1 and C2, as well as your gimbal dial on the left hand side and another dial on the right hand side, which does support zoom on video, but not photo as I explained earlier. So I hopefully in the update, they actually change that. Now, if you're in manual or pro mode, for single photo shooting, hold the C1 button and then use the right dial. This will actually adjust the shutter speed. That's how it's set as default on the controller. And if you hold the C2 button and rotate the right dial, it will adjust ISO. And where it says button customization, this is where you'll be able to adjust the function buttons for the DJI RC2. So that is a quick overview for the camera setup on the DJI Air 3 on the actual menu settings from the three dots, and then the camera view settings from the drone, covering both auto and manual. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you want to learn more about the DJI Air 3, and you wanna see more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. Now, let's go to the comparison part from what I've taken so far with the DJI Air 3. <laughs> So first, let's talk about shooting in manual and auto. There isn't going to be much of a difference here. It's just giving you more control with the photo. Like I said earlier, if you want to have more creative shot, maybe you want to do a long exposure with some light trails, then maybe this is when you want to switch over to manual so you can increase the shutter speed. But it won't make a difference so much with photos, so long as you underexpose the images a little bit to help retain the highlights a little bit better and you can recover the shadows easier in post. Other than that, I haven't noticed a huge difference with shooting with either mode. Now let's take a quick look at the differences between JPEG and RAW. So this is where I went to Scarborough Blast the other day. So you can see already we have the RAW file, which is the digital negative and then the JPEG. This is a 12 megapixel photo. So we can see here, this is the RAW file and then this is the JPEG. The one thing I have noticed with JPEGs is that they are slightly brighter and the colors seem to be, seem to have more of a yellow tinge to it. So both the RAW file and the JPEG have my preset put, put onto this and you can see there is a slight difference. If we zoom into this tree here, we can see this, this looks more white, whereas this one, it doesn't seem to be as white anymore. Let's take a look at this photo. So again, this is the RAW file. And then this is the JPEG. And so this is a 48 megapixel photo. So this is the raw file here. And then this is the JPEG. And you can see what I mean earlier with, because when the sun came out, it's just more orange, I find. Whereas with the raw, it seems to retain the colors a little bit better. So here's one of some clouds I've taken. So this is the raw file again. And this is the JPEG. So we can see straight away there is more grain on the JPEG than there is with the RAW. And it's the exact same preset. And just one more example with between the differences of JPEG and RAW. 
This is just a picture of Lake Ontario with some lovely clouds in the distance. Now, the raw file is this one, and then this is the JPEG. Now we can see the JPEG is a little bit brighter. However, I wanna bring your attention to the clouds specifically. So if we zoom in, again, this is a 48 megapixel photo. So this is on the JPEG. Now, if we go to the raw file, you can see straight away, there is far more detail and definition in the clouds in comparison to the JPEG. Now it's down to you which you prefer to use. So if you are sharing on social media, JPEGs will be fine and you won't have to process the images as much. They tend to be processed already. Whereas raw files are unprocessed images and you need to do some editing to them to make them look better. Now let's talk about 12 versus 48 megapixels. So we're gonna look at the raw file specifically for the differences between 12 and 48. So we have these images here. So you can see this one is 4032, and that is a 12 megapixel, whereas this one here is 8064 by 6048, which is the 48 megapixel. And then just click the magnifying glass to zoom in. That's how much zoom we get. However, if we do the same for the 48 megapixel, we have a lot more detail at the same zoom level, like a lot more detail. And if you need, even if you zoom in further with the rocks, and then we do the same for the 12 megapixel, if we zoom in, you can see it's starting to pixelate. So even though the camera is called pixel binning, so I don't know too much technical detail on how this is being achieved. It's how smartphones use it as well, but essentially the pixels being divided up further into four, giving you more detail. And for me, I'm definitely noticing a difference that the 48 megapixels are better in detail. However, that being said, the file sizes are much higher for the 48 megapixel versus the 12. As we can see here, the 12 megapixel is coming in about 25 meg per photo for a raw file. And then for the 48 megapixel, we're looking at almost 100 megabyte per raw file. Let's look at the JPEGs as well, because we have JPEGs. So a 48 megapixel JPEG, you're looking about 30-ish. And then for the 12 megapixel, we're looking just under 10. So looking between seven to 10 there. So there's a huge difference. So you need to consider like, if you're gonna be taking, if you wanna take one good photo, use the 48 megapixels. Otherwise, if you're tight on storage, you don't wanna eat up all your cloud storage, or you don't have much space on your drive or your external drives, but you may have to find a balance between shooting 48 megapixels or shooting in JPEGs. So that's just something to consider. I do wanna do another example between the 12 and 48. So we have here of Humber Bridge. So this one is the 12 megapixel raw file. And if I click the zoom in, Whereas if I do the raw file on the 48 megapixel, you can see a lot more detail. What I'll do is I'll put on screen right now is the difference in file sizes so you can see, and that way you can have that, take a screenshot if you wish, so you know in future what type of file format you wanna be taking with your DJI Air 3, and considering the space and storage options that you're gonna need going forward. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the two options on the camera. So we have a 24 millimeter and a 70 millimeter. So far, I really, really like the 70 millimeter on the Air 3. It's fantastic. So let's take a look at some example shots. So again, going back to Scarborough Bluffs, you can see here in Lightroom, it gives you the lens type here. So this was shot on the wide. So we can see the difference visually. So this is the the wide angle, and then this is the 70 millimeter from the same location from where the drone is. We're getting a lot more just zoomed in. So again, this is the 24 millimeter lens on the DJI Air 3. And then from the same location, this is the 70. Just look at the difference. I don't know which one you prefer. They just offer two different styles. And let's do one more different shot here. So we have this 24 millimeter, and then you have the 70 millimeter. I really like the 70 millimeter lens on the DJI Air 3, especially when it comes to video, which we'll be discussing in future. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for next week, where we'll be covering AEB, basically HDR photos, burst mode and time shot. We'll cover those in the next one. Remember to give this video a like and subscribe for future videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. 
And before you go, YouTube recommends you should watch this next. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.